The tip this week is about left slanting decreases, which are usually made with an SSK. And I had a student ask about uh, these decreases, so I decided to do another video on them. I've done plenty of videos in the past. And in the past, the way that a left slanting decrease, which mirrors a knit two together, which is a right slanting decrease, um, was made was with a slip knit pass over. Now the problem with this method is if you look at this guy, it's pretty stretched out and nasty looking. And one of the reasons for that is that when you slip that stitch, you've got that stitch on your needle and it can get stretched out. And then when you knit that stitch and then you pass it over, it just acerbates the problem. Now, if you want to make this decrease and make it neater, you can just baby, baby, baby it on your needle tips. Just barely, barely, barely work it. And it is going to make it slightly smaller. Okay? Now, Back when I first started knitting, that was the only type of decrease there was. But I hadn't been knitting for very long when everybody, except the British and Japanese, were using SSKs. And the reason for that is that it produces a slightly smaller decrease because it evenly distributes the yarn that you are slipping over two stitches. And go see what these guys look like. Now again, to make an SSK, you slip the stitch. I'm working three stitches in. And I'm going to make it sloppy this time. I slip one, slip one. Now what that actually does is it's adjusting the orientation of those stitches on your needle. Notice that these guys, the leg on the right is towards the front and on these the leg in the left. And then I just slip my needle in here and I knit those two guys together. And it is, if you can see, smaller than the SKP. But if I make it this way, where I just baby it and baby it, and notice how I'm just barely, barely even touching it. that's going to make it even smaller. So you can compare that one to that one. Now, a third way to make an SSK is uh, a way that I make it if I'm doing a project, say, where I'm making decreases on the front of a neckline that are going to be very noticeable. And that is, I'm going to work a couple of rows here so we can get the difference, is when you slip for an SSK, what you're doing is you're adjusting the amount of the stitch on the needle. And another way you can adjust the amount of a stitch on the needle is by uh, wrapping it the wrong way on the purl row. And so what I'm going to do, because I'm going to do my wrong row, is I'm going to wrap the wrong way here and the wrong way here and the wrong way here, and the wrong way here. And we'll see what I do with that on the other side, because what I'm doing, in essence, is that I am adjusting the amount of the stitch on the row before. Now, to do this, you need to think about it, which, you know, how many of us like to think when we knit. But if I'm doing a project where the SSK needs to be pretty small, that's what I'll do. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work up to the place where I'm going to be using my two decrease stitches. And on the right side, these are the two stitches that I'm going to decrease. And I'm going to wrap the stitch the wrong way. But I am not going to pull it tight. Often when you're wrapping a stitch the wrong way, you're doing it to make the stitches smaller. I'm not trying to make those stitches smaller. I'm just trying to reorient them on the needle. And then I think this is where I'm going to be doing it. Same thing here. Just wrap the wrong way wrap the wrong way, and then work. Now, in essence, what that's done is it's the same thing as slipping the stitches, but anytime you slip a stitch, you're going to be stretching it out a bit. So I've just eliminated that stitch 
that part of the process. And I'm going to work to where those stitches, okay, you can see that this stitch is oriented properly. These two are not. Those are the ones where I wrapped the wrong way. So instead of having to slip them here, I just go in and I knit them through the back, together through the back loop. And then I'm to the next set, knit them through the back loop. Now again, I'm using just my needle tips because I don't want to stretch anything out. And those decreases are going to be smaller than the other ones. Now let me show you one where I've already made these decreases. And here is the SS, uh, the SKP. And you can see that it's bigger. Here is the SSK where I have really babied the stitches on my needle tip. And here is the one where I've wrap the stitches the wrong way on the row before to change the orientation. Now one of the things that bothers me with regular SSKs is that often the stitch before becomes enlarged and so it's just a little bigger and um, I notice this with my basics students a lot, how much bigger that stitch is. The other method seems to make it smaller and if you want to really do a comparison of the size of these, stretch them and you can see that this one is smaller this one's okay, and that one is much bigger.